and welcome to FPL Mates, your best mate for fantasy Premier League content for the 2023-24 season. My name is Dan and it's a very, very big episode of our final decision series because we've got a lot of players who are potentially injured and we're going to be covering all of them, all of the press conferences today as well as showing you a wildcard draft that I would be going with if I were one of you guys. So stick around, lots to discuss in today's video and if you do enjoy this one make sure you drop a like to let me know that you like these videos and also subscribe if you're new around here and you want these every single week, every Friday. Let's crack on with these press conferences because there's so much to go through. Okay, we're going to go through alphabetically through all of these. We're going to start off with Arsenal. And I know this is a very, very big one because there is apparently a lot of injury concerns at Arsenal right now. So we've got Saka, Martinelli, Trossard and Rice. All of these players have not trained ahead of game week seven. So all of these players are in major doubt, major contention. Now, I should say that Saka has done some gym work. Uh, I don't know if any of the other players have done some gym work as well, but I know Saka has for sure. So there is probably going to be a late call on him. I imagine that Saka does still have a chance of playing in game week seven but it's certainly not certain I don't want to speculate on this one too much all I can do is present the information that I have and is that Saka is not done full training is not trained with the squad but he has done gym work so it's really going to be very very touch and go but I imagine with the amount of players unavailable this week maybe Saka might actually need to play if he's almost even like almost ready we know from the past that when Saka is even like half fit he will typically still start for Arsenal so I do genuinely think there is still a good chance of him starting and playing but it's definitely not a certainty it's definitely not certain so it might be that he uh, kind of either gets rested in the midweek game uh, in uh, in the next week or he might just be uh, out for this game week and maybe come back and get some minutes before the Man City game in game week eight so it's a big big uh, decision hopefully we're going to get some more information over the next kind of 12 hours and I'll keep you posted on whatever I find out either on Twitter or on the deadline stream tomorrow so make sure you stay tuned for that we also We've got Saliba and Fabio Vieira. Both of them have a minor lot knocks, so we're not really sure if they're going to be available either. So basically, it's a real, real challenge for Arsenal this game week. There could be a lot of players unavailable. A lot of them are not going to play. Some of them might play, but we don't know exactly uh, what's sure. So I'm so, I'm so sorry. I can't tell you for sure if Saka is going to start tomorrow. All I know is he's not trained. That's the big news for today. Uh, for Aston Villa, Bailey has been injured in midweek. He's going to be unavailable. Moreno is still working on his fitness, so he's not quite ready to play. And a late call is going to be made on Ramsey, as apparently he's still feeling a little bit of pain. For Bournemouth, there's going to be a late call on Solanke. He has not trained before today, but did return today on Friday uh, to training, which is, uh, I guess, good news for him in many ways. Adams is going to be assessed, and Kelly Scott, Metham, Fredericks, and Mar uh, Mar Marconi, or well, I can't remember his name now. He's still out by um in for Bradford uh, we still got Henry me Sharda De Silva and Baptiste uh, but all of these players are going to be out and uh, Damsgaard has also had surgery this week and he is going to be available as well so a lot of players missing for Brentford right now which is a little bit worrying for them right now for Brighton, Ferguson is now available again after another illness or a reoccurrence of illness that he suffered in the midweek, which made him unavailable for the League Cup match. But yeah, he is going to be back now, which is good news for him. Gross, Milner and Lalana are all going to be out for game week seven. So this could mean that a player like Jao, uh, Jao Pedro could be playing behind the striker there. So if you still have him, maybe you could actually get a game out of him. For Burnley, Benson picked up a knock. He's going to be out for game week seven. Foster, he's still going to be banned for game week seven as well. And Redmond is set to be back after the next international break. So he's still going to be out for a while. Chelsea, another fairly big one that we're all talking about. A lot of us have Chilwell still in our team. He's got a bad injury. Apparently, it's pretty bad news for Chilwell. He's expected to be out for a month or maybe even more, according to some reports. So uh, he still needs a second scan to get a confirmation on this injury and try and work out what the time frame is on him. But it's not looking good for Chilwell. So he might actually have to be a sell. Do, rec uh, do kind of um, regret a little bit putting him as a keep in my buy, sell, keep a void video because I would uh, actually sell him at this point. I would definitely sell him if you have him already. Uh, Trippier is the obvious player to replace him with, but maybe Botman, if you can't quite afford um, a, a, a Trippier, could be an option, but uh, Botman is another player we need to speak about in one moment as well, so we'll get to that. But uh, before we do that, Chukwameka and Madweke both could be back, back and James, Reese James, could be as back as early as game week eight. So he's actually nearing a return a little bit quicker than we initially thought, which is good news on Reese James. For Crystal Palace, 
Henderson, the goalkeeper, he could be out for a while. He's got a thigh injury, which means if you're a Johnston owner, that's probably good news for you. He could be uh, in the team uh, for a few more weeks, at least guaranteed nailed on, which is good. Uh, Edward, he's still injured. He's going to be out for game week seven. Elise uh, is the only really other interesting player injured at Crystal Palace right now. Uh, no uh, known return date for him, uh, but Crystal Palace do have a couple of other injuries ongoing there as well. For Everton, uh, Dominic Calvert-Lewin and Harrison, both of those are now available. Good news there. Uh, Everton will be careful apparently with Mikalenko, however, so unsure if he's going to be available to start. Uh, there are apparently a few other knocks in the Everton team, but nothing major. For Fulham, Tosin and Traore, they're still going to be unavailable. Tete is going to have a late assessment, but Lukic is back. For Liverpool, Trent has trained. He's now available. Good news there. Gomez should be okay for game week seven as well. However, Bashetic has a minor calf in, uh, issue that has kind of uh, been plaguing him a little bit. So he is still going to be unavailable in the short term. But hopefully he's going to be back soon because I feel like Liverpool could really do with the uh, the young talent that he is. For Luton, Barkley is back in training, but he is going to be unavailable for game week seven. He's not quite ready to start games. Uh, Lockyer, he is available for selection. Clark, Osho and Potts are all still injured. For Man City, Bernardo, Stones and De Bruyne are still unavailable. Uh, no date on Stones. De Bruyne is expected back in December, but Bernardo is nearing a return. He could be back as early as next game week against Arsenal, but I wouldn't hold my breath on that one. I imagine he will be back within the next couple of game weeks, though, which is good news for City. Rodri, he is going to be suspended until game week nine. That's when he is going to be back. So he's going to be unavailable this week against Wolves, unavailable against Arsenal in game week eight as well. But game week nine, uh, he could be back. So maybe that's actually good news for some of your Arsenal players if you have them right now uh, without Rodri. Man City are just not going to be quite as good, which maybe give, uh, gives Arsenal a little chance there. Uh, Greenish and Kovacic are back, of course, there. So uh, yeah, a few more players slowly being added back into Man City's available roster. For Man United, Martinez is going to be out for an extended period. Uh, Reguilón is also going to be uh, out for Game Week 7, so no left-backs at Manchester United right now. Uh, it's probably going to be Dallow playing on the left and uh, maybe wan on the right, something like that, uh, if, he's, if he's available. Um, Mount and Amrabat, they are going to be available, however. They're, they are going to be back in the Manchester United team for now. Uh, for Newcastle, there's still a chance for Botman and Wilson to play in Game Week 7, apparently. They're, they're kind of being monitored day by day, but they haven't been ruled out completely. So we could see some good news on Botman and Wilson. I, I personally kind of feel reasonably confident that Botman could be available. Um, I'll probably put it at something like, a, I don't know, a 60 or 70% chance of Botman playing, uh, but he is very close, so at the very worst case scenario, he's probably going to be back for game week eight. Uh, there's also going to be a late call made on Isaac, but I'm not as confident in him as I am with Wilson and Botman. Barnes, however, we know he is going to be out for several months, three months out for Barnes, so if you have him, got to be sold, unfortunately. And for Forrest, Tavares isn't too far away. Uh, the injury is not as serious as initially thought, which is good news there. Danilo is still out and a late call is going to be made on Felipe. Although, to be honest, Felipe uh, is still uh, no match fitness. I, I don't imagine that he will be starting this week. But yeah, he is, uh, he is getting there. He is nearing a return, Felipe. For Sheffield United, uh, Hamer should be available. Fleck is back in training and McBurney uh, returns following suspension. So uh, good news all round from Sheffield United right now. With Spurs, however, we have had the news that Madison and Son, both of those players have had knocks, but... They both are in full training. So they're going to be assessed before tomorrow's game against Liverpool. So I do feel reasonably confident about these two players. I, I think they will both be available and will both start. So I don't think I would worry about selling the likes of Madison and Son. I think I would keep them. If you're on a wild card, maybe you could sacrifice a Madison. But I would uh, aim to keep these players. They are in training. So at the very least, they're going to be back next game week. But should be fine for this week as well. So reasonably good news on Madison and Son. Both in full training. That is what we like to see when a player is in full training. Training, the chances of them starting is reasonably high as long as there hasn't been any long-term issues there. Uh, Johnson is going to be unavailable though for game week seven. So uh, yeah, Johnson uh, doesn't look good, unfortunately. Brennan Johnson, so yeah, probably not going to be playing. Uh, Manuel Solomon perhaps takes that left-hand side of the attack against Liverpool. For West Ham, uh, they've got pretty much a clean bill of health. Really looking quite good at West Ham at the moment. Creswell is in fact the only player who is a doubt in the squad. But 
he is making good progress. So uh, Creswell could be back soon. And uh, West Ham will have 100% uh, available players. Well, how often do you get to say that about a Premier League football team? And for Wolves, Doyle can't face his parent club, Man City. Bellegarde is suspended until uh, game week nine. So he's not going to be in there either. So a couple of players lacking in the midfield positions for Wolves. Uh, but aside from that, there is no known injury issues at Wolves either. So another fortunate team, really, apart from those uh, suspensions in the uh, the uh, the cup tied. Doyle as well so yeah looking good uh, I, I kind of uh, I kind of feel like that is good news for West Ham and Wolves but yeah Spurs is that one on this page that you kind of you worry about a little bit because we want Madison we want Son for this game week but I, I wouldn't be too worried since they're both in full training which is a uh, yeah it's what we like when we're FPL managers and we're looking for signs of whether a player is going to play or not so that is your press conferences roundup for game week seven but we still got a few things to talk about today. So the question on everyone's lips this game week is, should they replace Saka? Now, this is going to be up to you, but like I said, I'm not 100% sure if Saka is going to be available. I will probably put it like a 50-50 chance right now for him being available against Bournemouth. So you might think about selling him. And the main reason why you might replace Saka is because if he doesn't play against Bournemouth, the fixes after that are not great. Man City at home and then Chelsea away after that. They're not the best fixtures. Let's be honest, they're pretty bad fixtures, really. And I know some people will say, oh, Chelsea's not such a bad fixture, really, is it? Chelsea Chelsea have been pretty rubbish. Well, Chelsea are actually putting up really good defensive numbers. They're not conceding too many goals in the last five games. I think they've only conceded two goals, three clean sheets out of their last five in all competitions. So actually, in general, a Chelsea away from home game isn't ideal. It really isn't ideal. After that, though, we do have Sheffield United, which is a nice fixture. And then after the Newcastle fixture in game week 11, the fixtures do start to look a lot better. So Saka, even if you do remove him, it's not going to be forever. And you should probably think of a plan of how you're going to get him back into your team. Because uh, after game week 9, game week 10, you're probably going to think about bringing him back in. At the very latest, you want to be bringing him back in for game week 12. Saka has been doing really, really well this season. Uh, back him to do okay, even in those more difficult fixtures. But if the fixtures are more difficult he's no longer a must-have if you like so there are some potential replacements these five are my favorites for your Saka replacement so first of all Son he's a must-have in game week eight uh you know you're, a lot of people are going to be captaining him in game week eight against Luton as well so he is a player that you want to get to and if you haven't got him already moving Saka to Son arguably improves your team and deals with an injury issue at the same time so I think there's a lot of benefits from just simply moving Saka to Son if you don't already have him Salah he He's probably going to be a really popular and essential player soon as well. He's difficult to get to because of his prize. But uh, if you can afford to get Salah, I would definitely think about that. He's another player who probably improves your team uh, whilst you remove Saka. So another way of doing two things at once, removing an in a potentially injured player and improving your team at the same time, which is very, very nice. We've got Madison. He's going to be a great pick for game week eight and nine. You're probably going to go in for him next week at the very latest, aren't you? So again, go on that one one week early. We've got Diaby. Amazing fixtures between now and game week 15. Theme. So you've got a nice long-term bargain there. Frees up a little bit of budget for other moves in your team as well. So like the look of Diaby. We've got Bowen here as well. Great form. He's differential and he's got a fixture against Sheffield United next. So definitely would we'll be having a keen look at Bowen as well. Just wanted to compare the stats of all of the midfielders. Of course, all of this has come from the Optus Stats tool on Fantasy Football Hub. Make sure you go check that out. Link in the description if you haven't done already. Um, but yeah, Salah is top for expected points so far this season. We've got players like Mbumo, Saka, uh, uh, Bruno Fernandes. The penalty takers typically are at the top. We can see that indeed. But yeah, you can clearly see here that Salah is still the best midfielder to go for uh, in general. But it's just his price that is an issue. Uh, and Bumo, his numbers are dropping off, but a penalty is going to save everything there. So I don't think he's a must sell or anything like that. Uh, we've got Saka, who is potentially injured. Bruno Fernandes, uh, confidence waning in him. Bowen, like I say, looking really, really good so far this season and a good fixture next. So Bowen is definitely on the menu. I like him for 7.1 million, a decent price there as well. Uh, we've got Madison there and then Son. That Son is an interesting one because his first few games, his stats were terrible, but his last few games, his stats have been amazing. So, uh, yeah, uh, he looks like he's mid-table, but more recently, he's really coming into form. Rashford slightly below him. Neto has got Man City next, so probably wouldn't be looking at him. Um, but interestingly, some of these other players you probably expected to be a bit higher are kind of low here. So, Mitama, Diaby, and Foden, pretty low. And at the bottom, a lot of people talking about Gordon, a lot of people talking about Ward-Prowse, uh, particularly Gordon per minute play, because obviously Ward-Prowse didn't play in game week one. 
per like minute played, Gordon is actually looking like the worst option of all of these players, but he is really, really cheap. So you have that. You know he's going to be nailed from here on as well. So I guess that's good news because of his... Um, uh, because of uh, the injury to Barnes, probably going to see Gordon play pretty much every single game, you, you would imagine. So, yeah, um, it's an interesting one. But, look, this is FPL. If you're paying the cheaper prices, you're going to get slightly less out of that player. And you're going to get these kind of players who are probably going to average four points per game week, which is not as much as the likes of Salah or Saka or a Son or a Madison. A little bit more expensive, but they'll be getting you more points per game. So just be aware of that. If you are picking up a Gordon, if you are picking up a Ward Prowse, don't expect anything massive from them on average in the long term uh, because, yeah, they're cheap for a reason, really. But, uh, yeah, look, these are still the most popular uh, and best midfielders that we're kind of all talking about right now. And uh, in general, I would say I like all of them. Right, uh, the game week seven wild card. Some of you guys have played it already. Some of you guys are thinking about playing it with all of the injuries that you have. It's going to really be up to you whether you think you should play it. Now, I have played mine. I've played my wild card. I feel like it's the right time for me, but it's not a must have. And there's still other opportunities to play the wild card. Going in on game week eight is a decent time to wild card. If you want to just wait one more week to kind of assess the situation, game week 10 is a good uh, wild card for some fixture swings. And you could wait all the way till game week 19 as well, which will be your last opportunity to play the wild card. And there is a, a, a new additional benefit to doing that, which we will speak about in uh, just one moment. But uh, yeah, for now, if you're going to go for a game week six wild card, uh, game week seven wild card, I guess it depends on what kind of state your team is. If you've got a lot of players who either are injured, suspended, you know, a lot of you guys are going to have Chilwell, Jackson and Gusto in your team. Maybe you've also got Saka in your team. Maybe you've also got a few other players that you're not fully confident in or you just don't like anymore. Maybe you've gone off your Manchester United players. Maybe you've got a lot of Brighton players and don't like the look of their fixtures right now. If you have a lot of these things all combined into one then that might be a sign that you can play your wild card right now. So if you guys were to play a wild card, I know I've kind of already shown you my wild card team yesterday, and I did make it very clear in that video, this is what I would go for a wild card. I don't recommend this team for you. It is a risky wild card. So I've got for you today a slightly safer wild card. So if I'm recommending a wild card to you guys, this is what I would do. So, Ariola in goal. We've got a defense of Kabore, Trippier, and Botman. Still sticking with Botman. Yes, indeed. We have got the cover of Cash on the bench for him. In midfield, Salah, Son, Gordon, Diaby, and Madison. So, we've got the double Spurs uh, midfield there. Nice and ready to go. Diaby for his long term fixtures, and Gordon, nice and cheap there. We've got Erling Haaland and Alvarez as the two forwards as well. And this team only costs 100.4 million, which I imagine, or I hope, a lot of you guys can afford, and maybe you might even be able to afford even more than this. And if so, I would think about potentially upgrading Cash to an Estupinian. You can maybe change uh, Alvarez uh, up front to someone slightly different. Or if you're not convinced by Botman and Madison, these are also players that you could potentially move around and sacrifice. Botman could go down to Burn, for example, at 4.5. Uh, probably not such a great FPL asset in the longer term, but he at least covers you with that safety that you know he's available for this game week. So yeah, uh, Burn, I would consider swapping Botman out for, uh, obviously, a few other players that you could maybe switch around. But I would make sure Ariola Turner looked like the players to go for. Kabore, Trippier look pretty good as well. Trippier maybe could be sacrificed if you want to save the money. And we've got the likes of Salah and Son, uh, who I think are really, really important as well as Erling Haaland. So that's your game with seven wildcard draft. That is what I recommend to you guys. Uh, for those of you guys asking, what 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 do you do on a wild card? What do you recommend for me on a wild card? This. This team is what I would go for. Okay, let's talk about some double game week players. So, we've got Luton with a double game week against Everton and against Burnley. And we've got Burnley against Newcastle and Luton. So, these two teams playing each other as that additional fixture in game week seven, which is pretty nice. But here are the players that I am looking at the most personally right now. These are the players I've got the keenest eye on. We've got Morris. He's the best attacking threat from Luton. He's going to be nailed on for 90 minutes and he is on penalties. We've got Kabore. He's cheap. Solid attacking numbers for his price. Pretty decent uh, attacking numbers. Some people would maybe say uh, Doughty at 4.5 could be could have slightly better attacking numbers. But I think the additional price, unless I'm wildcarding very, very soon, I would just stick with the cheap Kabore, to be honest. Uh, if, if I'm wildcarding this game week, I stick with the cheap Kabore because, you know, you can just stick him on the bench for future game weeks, which is nice and easy to do. Uh, yeah, Kabore definitely passing the eye test, looking fairly creative there and taking the odd shot as well. We've got Taylor here. Uh, yeah, Charlie Taylor, very cheap. 
He's played the last two games. He's played well. But the only problem is Vitinho is back now for Burnley. So could Taylor be ro rotated with Vitinho? Potentially. But I just think in general, Taylor has played quite well. Burnley fans seem to be very, very happy about his re-inclusion. So at 3.9 million, could be a really nice bargain player to pick up. Frees up a little bit of budget there, doesn't he? Uh, Amdouni, he's probably your best attacking threat from Burnley. But that's about it. Not massively convinced by this one. Would probably prefer to go for Morris, to be honest, in that uh, attacking position. And uh, Alda Kiel, I wanted to mention him as well. 4 million, so slightly more expensive than Taylor. But... He's, he's more nailed on, that's for sure. We know he is more nailed on than Taylor. He is probably going to be playing both of these games, which is pretty nice. Uh, and he actually does have a small amount of attacking threat, which has been quite nice to see as well. So, yeah, there's some potential there with Alder Kiel. I'm just not sure if I love the Newcastle fixture. That's the worry for Burnley, isn't it? But could they keep a clean sheet against Luton? Hey, why not? Morris owners probably don't think so. But Burnley's defensive numbers have not been as bad in the last couple of games as uh, people have been making them out to be. So I think we could potentially see Burnley keep the odd clean sheet here, particularly if they go with Taylor in defence again. I think that might be the key to a lot of it. But I can see him getting rotated in that second game against Luton. And that's really the one where you want your, uh, your Burnley defender, isn't it? So yeah, something to worry about, but something to think about as well. Right, here's your goalkeeper start order, your goalkeeper bench list. Of course, we do a full bench list of all players on our our deadline stream. So make sure you join the deadline stream if you want to have uh, one of these types of lists. But for all players in, in the FPL, midfielders, defenders, forwards, everything. Uh, but in terms of goalkeepers, you guys often ask me, which goalkeeper should I start, A or B? Well... Whoever is higher on this list out of the two goalkeepers you have right now is the player I would start. This has got nothing to do with transfers. This is just about the two goalkeepers you currently have. Who would I start and who would I bench? Well, if you've got a Pope and an Ariola, I would play Pope. If you've got a, I don't know, a, a Leno and an Allison, I would play Leno. So there you go, etc., etc. I'm sure you guys can work out the rest. Feel free to pause if you want to have a little scan through here and try and find your goalkeeper pairing and work out which one uh, I would personally play out of the two of them. Right, here is some new news. New double game week potentially coming up. And this has come from Ben Krellin, obviously the fixture wizard. So massive shout out to Ben over on Twitter. And uh, yeah, he said that Man City versus Brentford is a blank in game week 18. We knew this. We knew this already. But what does this mean? Both teams are now out of the League Cup which means this fixture has the potential to be rescheduled in a League Cup week. So in the midweek slot where other teams are playing in the League uh, in the League Cup, both Man City and Brentford, they will not be playing in the League Cup. So their fixture that, that was blanked in Game Week 18 can be moved now to Game Week 20. So what we have now, I think, and the, the big takeaway from this is the potential for a wild card in Game Week 19 uh, because it will be a, it'll be a time where uh, we have a blank in 18. You could, so you could take your Man City players out in game week 19, uh, in 18. You could take your Brentford players out by game week 18 as well. And then in game week 19, you can wildcard all your Man City and Brentford players back in, ready for their double game week. Uh, and then in game week 20, you will have that double game week and we will see the benefit of perhaps going for, you know, triple Man City and maybe a couple of Brentford players in there as well. Get the extra fixture out of them. Um, now, it should be said that this will be a really super busy time for Man City. They should have most of their players, or all of their players, back available by this point. De Bruyne should be back by this point. So, because it's going to be such a hectic period for them, and they have a deep squad, we could see rotation here. So, I know it sounds really nice to get a double game week for Man City, like this early in the season, game week 20, pretty early in terms of double game weeks. Um, but... Like there still could be rotation, so I don't know if I love the I don't know if I love the wild card 19 strategy. It is definitely viable, but don't sacrifice your team now for this one because I don't think it's going to be quite as powerful at, in reality as it sounds in uh, in theory, you know. Uh, but regardless, Man City will have a double game week of Sheffield United and Brentford both at home. Brentford will have a double game week of Crystal Palace and Man City both away. Brentford's double game week obviously is not as good as Man City's. And for those of you guys who have been asking me every single game week, should I triple captain Harlan? Should I do the triple captain yet? Is it triple captain time? Well, uh, for the first time this season, there is a triple captain week in sight as far as I'm concerned. This Man City double game week against Sheffield United and Brentford, as long as Haaland is fit and available and looks like he's going to be playing both matches, I would really, really consider 
triple captaining him in game week 20 if this double game week goes ahead. So huge news there. We have got a potential triple captain week already and we can start planning that chip strategy. Hallelujah. We can start talking about these chips. So yeah, very nice indeed. Man City double game week in game week 20. It's a very, very key bit of information to start thinking about for later on in the season. And finally, let's throw out some Game Week 7 differentials. So we've got a couple of Luton Town players in here, of course, for their double Game Week. Morris is going to be your forward differential. 6.2% owned. Real differential. I would expect it to see more people own him, but... Quite frankly, they don't. He is still pretty differential. Everton and Burley, nice fixes for him. Penalties, 90-minute man, uh, could be pretty good. Got Gordon here, definitely still a differential at 5.5%. Ownership, nice and cheap. Burnley up next and some good fixtures after that as well for Newcastle. Gordon, we're expecting to be relatively nailed on without Barnes there. So, yeah, in general, Gordon, a decent little pick for, for his price. You know, best in his price bracket, probably just ahead of Decore. And we've got Cabore, speaking of Ores. Uh, we've got Cabore here as well. 4 million defender. He is a player I, I like for a double game week player for Luton because you can pick him up for this game week, take the points, and then in future game weeks, you just bench him. He's so cheap, it doesn't matter. You can just bench him, bench him, bench him. But for now, a nice little player, a nice little pick at £4 million. Uh, pounds. So that is everything covered, I believe, for Game Week 7. Of course, if anything wasn't covered in this video, be, uh, feel free to leave a comment uh, and ask me a question. I'll try and answer as many questions as I can. So leave them down below. If you enjoyed this one and you want to see this content every single game week, do leave a like and do subscribe to make sure you get this in your subscription feeds. And uh, of course, like I said, uh, Fantasy Football Hub, link in the description. This is your last chance to get their, your, their, um, their guarantee of your money back if you don't win your mini league. So if you don't win your mini league you will get your money back for your whole years of subscription that is how confident they are that you will win your mini league by using their tool so make sure you do that before the game week seven deadline if you are still interested or if you like the looks of any of the fantasy football hub tools um, that you have seen on this channel of course it helps out the channel here as well and allows us to keep it running uh, every time you guys subscribe to that because we obviously get a commission there so really really appreciate you guys who uh, are checking out fantasy football hub but aside from that guys deadline stream tomorrow looking forward to seeing you guys there for all of the final drama on my wildcard and sharing any last minute team news. Uh, so hopefully see a few, a few of you guys there. Uh, but aside from that, thank you so much for watching. Check out this video if you want to. And I will see you later, mate. Bye-bye.